Now we go in depth on a 12 News exclusive brain breakthrough. As we reported Tuesday, scientists have spent decades struggling to make progress against glioblastoma, the most common and deadliest form of brain cancer. Target 12 investigator Ted Nisi had that special report. He joins us now to talk about the findings. Ted, first, you were saying a lot of viewers have reached out. This was personal for you, and to hear from all those viewers must have been incredible. Yeah, it really was, Kate. As, uh, as I t mentioned in my report, this week actually marks 20 years since my own mom died of glioblastoma. She was 48. Um, she only lived for six weeks after her diagnosis. You see, I started at my high school graduation. This was just before she was diagnosed. And ever since mom died, I've wondered why it's been such a struggle to make progress against this specific type of cancer. And so I decided this was a good moment to explore that topic in depth. And I, and I have to say, as you said, Kate, it's, it really has been something to hear from a lot of viewers who's, who have had family members affected by glioblastoma. And a number of them said to me they felt like uh, this type of cancer doesn't make maybe get as much attention as some others, so right. they were glad to see 12 News put a spotlight on it. And as much as, you know, it might be considered rare compared to other types of cancer, it seems like everyone is touched in some way by this. Yeah, we've seen prominent Americans like uh, Ted Kennedy, John McCain, President Biden's son Bo died of glioblastoma. And this is all in the years since uh, my mother died in the last 20 years. And what we learned is that the doctors, uh, there's just not a lot they can do even now. Right now, the typical glioblastoma patient only lives for a year or two. And as part of our report, we visited experts like Dr. Heinrich Elanzano at the Lifespan Cancer Institute. He was part of a big global clinical trial of a vaccine for glioblastoma patients that did show some promising results. And then we also visited Brown University professor Sean Lawler. He has a lab that's trying all sorts of different avenues against glioblastoma, including actually an ancient Chinese medicine that they think could help patients. You've been working on this for 20 years. As you said, understanding has grown in a significant way, but therapy is not as much as you, I'm sure all of you would hope. Look out another 20 years. Um, do you think we're going to see major, major breakthroughs in terms of treating glioblastoma patients in the next 20 years? Yeah, I think I have to be optimistic about that. There's so many people pushing and pushing and pushing, and, and I think in our field, we have a, a real determination to, to, to get to improve outcomes for these people who are affected by the disease. And leaders at Brown are also pushing to create a federally designated National Cancer Center here in Providence, which could open up more options for researchers like Professor Lawler and also for patients, and that includes when it comes to glioblastoma. So there's still a, a long way to go, Kate, but I did also hear in this reporting some reasons for hope. Wow, definitely, and you'll want to check that out. His full story is on our website at WPRI.com. Target 12 investigator Ted Nisi, thanks so much for sharing your story and joining us. Good to be here, Kate.